This is Xochimilco. Located in the Valley of Mexico, it is the southernmost borough of the country's capital. Mexico City. The borough is known for its internationally famous canal system that is a remnant of what was an extensive lake and water system that connected most of the settlements in the Valley of Mexico. These canals surround Chinampas, small artificial islands of fertile land made up on the freshwater wetlands for agricultural purposes. These canals and Chinampas attract over a million tourists and city residents annually to traverse the canals, view the scenic beauty of Xochimilco and visit the different islands. However, there is one Chinampa in particular that has gained infamy for its thousands of creepy occupants and its dark and disturbing past. Hello and welcome back to A Real Horror Show. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about and diving into the history of what is said to be the most haunted place in Mexico. Of course, I'm talking about the Isla de las Muñecas, aka the island of the dolls. I want to apologize right now to any Spanish speakers if my Spanish is absolutely terrible, but I promise I'm trying my best. And I'll be showing you guys the footage that I actually filmed there when I visited and we'll be talking about its very haunted history. As some of you guys may know, my girlfriend Pame is Mexican. And by the way, she has an amazing YouTube channel where she analyzes cinema and does amazing movie reviews. So for anyone who watches me who can speak Spanish, please go check out her channel and support her. She works extremely hard and makes incredible content. While well, that's the girlfriend plug out of the way, I guess I'll get some boyfriend points for that. And earlier this year when we were visiting her aunt and her cousins in Mexico City, we were taken on a trip to experience Xochimilco and of course visit the infamous island of the dolls. And as you can probably imagine, I was extremely excited. I had known about this island for many years as it gained a lot of notoriety due to the popularity of dark tourism, which is defined as tourism involving travel to places historically associated with death and tragedy. But besides the fact that this island is occupied by thousands of creepy dolls, I never knew actually anything about the island's history, who put the dolls there in the first place, and most importantly, why? Well, not only did I get the answers to all of those questions, but I was also surprised at just how much I learned regarding the history and culture within Xochimilco, and how naturally beautiful the place actually is. Since you can only reach the island by boat, our journey began at the Kemanco dock as we boarded our trajinera, a colourfully painted large gondola-like boat decked out with a large table and around 20 seats that is steered manually along the canals by a guide who will take you to various chinampas by your request. These trajinera rides last for however long you pay for, but it would be easy to spend at least half a day out there on those canals, especially if you're in a large group of people. So obviously, the longer that you're out there, the more that you're going to see before you get brought back to the start at the dock. It's very popular for people to ride trajineras for events, such as birthday parties for example, or just to party in general, drink with friends and listen to music, which is a very common sight on the canals. Another cool thing is that there's actually trajineras out there on the canals that can come over to your boat and sell hot food, drinks and snacks, but of course you can bring your own. Additionally, there are many boats there that offer live music and mariachis will actually join you on your trajinera for a small fee and serenade you on your journey. Another interesting fact about Xochimilco is that it's the native habitat of the axolotl. Aww. And the only place on the planet where they're actually found in the wild, naturally. The axolotl is a salamander known for its incredible ability to practically restore or regenerate any part of its body, from missing limbs and tails to eye and heart tissue. They're also known worldwide for their incredibly unique yet incredibly cute appearance. Aww. They always look like they're smiling and I just absolutely love it. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to the axolotl's habitat being mostly destroyed after the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, their extensive use in scientific research, in native species and being kept as pets, the axolotl is now a critically endangered species and is extremely close to complete extinction. But this actually brings us to the first stop on my trip through the Xochimilco canals. As the first Chinampa we actually visited was an axolotl sanctuary. It was honestly a surreal experience to see all these axolotl and they were just so cute. <laughs> 
In addition to the axolotl themselves were snakes, lizards, tarantulas, which I am not a fan of, a really surprise looking crocodile, and these turtles that were giving each other piggyback rides. But you're not here for this cute content, you're here for the spooky sh**. Which brings us to our second stop on the Xochimilco canals, the island of La Llorona. Now for those who don't know, La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, is a vengeful spirit whose story is deeply rooted in Mexican culture. In folklore, it is said that the ghost roams near bodies of water, crying out and mourning for her children whom, in a fit of rage and jealousy due to her discovery that her husband was being unfaithful, she drowned. Her ghost now forever roams the earth in search of children to take for her own. As you can probably guess, this story is told as a cautionary tale to children, to stop them from wandering off alone, especially in the dark or near water. As we stepped onto the island, we were greeted by a giant towering wooden statue of the vengeful spirit. Carved in a totem style, the statue's haunting face was shaped like a skull, and her hands were posed as if she was ready to reach out and grab her next young victim. The statue stands there as a warning to all children to not wander alone and to keep away from the cries of the weeping woman. Surprisingly though, the La Llorona statue was actually the least scary thing on the island, as there was plenty of knockoff horror merch available for purchase, as well as a really rusty old slide that I'm seriously surprised I did not get some kind of disease from when I went down it. As the saying goes over there, Mexico Mexico. After journeying further down the canals of Xochimilco, we finally arrived at the infamous Island of the Dolls. Or did we? Little did I know, there are multiple chinampas in Xochimilco that have replicated the legendary Doll Island to profit from its infamy. However, it was certainly no disappointment, because this island was in all senses of the word, unsettling. I mean, right off the bat, we were greeted to the island with a dummy corpse hanging from a tree. Even though it was fake, it was extremely eerie, and I could only imagine what sights were waiting for me on the island. While I've got to say, whoever decorated this replica island tried to crank that creepy dial all the way up to 11. Practically every tree on the island had dolls either hanging from them, nailed to them, or impaled to them. On top of that, a lot of the dolls were either extremely burnt or disfigured in some way, shape, or form. At the back of the island was a small, extremely disturbing looking little cabin that was covered with, yeah you guessed it, more dolls. Both the exterior and interior was plastered with haunting figures and a few familiar faces including Dora the Explorer and Woody and Jesse from Toy Story 2. Even the world's most beloved rodent, Mickey Mouse, wasn't spared on this island. It's safe to say that this was no magic kingdom. And we even spent some time playing on the swing set, which is a rather funny contrast to the rest of the island's tone. In comparison to the real Island of the Dolls, this one was intentionally made to be horrifying. Yeah. So, if you ever find yourself travelling to Xochimilco, just be wary of these replica islands. But that said, I still recommend checking it out because it was certainly an experience. After sailing the maze of Xochimilco canals for over an hour, taking in the beautiful scenery, having snacks and drinks and plenty of laughs, and also exchanging many ghost stories, we finally began to arrive at what is said to be the most haunted place in Mexico, the legendary Isla de las Muñecas. I'm sorry if that Spanish was terrible. Stepping onto the island, we were greeted by a colourful archway displaying the island's name and a sign that read, Trespassers will be hunted, gutted and dismembered, which was very welcoming. Now, as silly as this may sound, and despite this being the famous island of the dolls, I was still not prepared for just how many dolls occupied this chinampa. Near the back of the island was a small cabin in which we sat, as every so often throughout the day, a lady comes and tells the visitors the story of the island's history, its many legends, and the tragic tale of the reclusive man who lived here. Don Julian Santana Barrera. It is said in local legend that Barrera came across the body of a young girl floating in the canal near his chinampa. He desperately made multiple attempts to try and revive the girl, but all were useless as the girl had already lost her life. The day after she drowned, he found a doll drifting along the water, which he believed had belonged to the little girl, and hung the doll from a tree in her memory. However, there are some who say that after this tragic event, Barrera felt constantly tormented and restless, which made him believe the girl's spirit was haunting his island. Additionally, there are some who say that the harvest on his island was not good, 
So out of superstition, he continued to hang up more and more dolls, whether it be because of crops or the idea that spirits was haunting his chenampa. Barrera continuously collected dolls to ward off bad spirits and energies. As time passed, Don Julian's obsession with dolls resulted in his chenampa becoming the place we all know it as today, and he eventually lost all contact with the outside world, living out his life as a hermit for decades alone on the island. Just him, the dolls, and very possibly, the spirits that haunted him. The locals believe the island was cursed, and some say that Barrera was even possessed by malicious entities, causing people to stay far away from his island. Even to this day in Xochimilco, there are some guides who steer the Trajineras who will straight up refuse to take you to the island, mainly out of their own fears and superstitions. There are some who say that Barrera's guilt for not being able to save that little girl's life made him go crazy. However, the part of the story that might be the strangest is how it all came to an end. In 2001, an elderly Barrera was fishing in the canals with his nephew. There, he confessed to his relative that there were mermaids in the water calling out to him. At one point, his nephew left to attend to the cattle on the island, and upon returning, he found his uncle's body floating lifelessly in the canal. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death was a heart attack. But what makes this story even more eerie is that not only had Barrera suffered the same fate as that little girl many decades previously, but he apparently also died in the exact same spot. Today, there is a reported number of nearly 4,000 dolls on the island. Just to be clear, not all of them were put there by Barrera, as a lot of them are donated by visitors and tourists. In fact, the lady on the island who told us all about its history let us know that the more purposely creepy looking dolls on the island were either donations or left there by various TV and film production teams after they have filmed there. As you can see, even Annabelle herself has made her way to this infamous island. Additionally, another really cool fact about the island is that the legendary director Tim Burton has donated a doll, which is also on display inside the cabin along with a doll called Agustina, who was reportedly Barrera's favourite. She has a small altar surrounding her, and people often leave gifts such as bracelets, which you can see are wrapped around her wrists in my footage, with the intentions of leaving bad energies and omens there. Other visitors may leave offerings to the dolls, in exchange for blessings and miracles, and apparently, some people even change the dolls' clothes as a form of worship. Also hung up in the cabin was what is to believe to be the very first doll that Barrera ever displayed on the island, which would also mean it's the very doll he found floating in the canal on that fateful day after the little girl tragically drowned. So what are your guys' thoughts on the Island of the Dolls? Do you think Barrera was driven mad by guilt and hung the dolls around the island to keep malicious entities and spirits at bay? Or is it all just a local legend and Barrera just became obsessed with collecting dolls in the memory of this little girl? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I also just want to say I'm extremely thankful to all my Mexican family. As for starters, without them, I wouldn't have even had the opportunity to go on this extremely incredible experience. But also, while we journeyed through the canals, they taught me so much about the history and culture of Xochimilco, as well as information about all the different islands there, and of course, the full history and the legends that surround the infamous Isla de las Muñecas. I just want to say, I love you all. So that brings the video to the end. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. It was something a little bit different on this channel. I'm very glad that I've been able to share this incredible experience with you all. And hopefully I've taught you some interesting things you might not have known before about the very famous Island of the Dolls. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Also go and follow me over on Instagram as there's plenty more horror content on there as well. I've got plenty more horror collection videos in the pipeline that are coming soon as well as various other things. So make sure you also click that bell notification icon so you don't miss a single upcoming video. Thank you all for the support on the channel. I hope you're enjoying what I'm putting out there. Until next time guys, take care.